Hey everyone, Raphael here from Network Engineer Pro. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the solution for the BGP Allow AS in lab. This is a really fun lab in my opinion because it's easy to troubleshoot and it's even easier to fix. A BGP router will drop the prefix if it sees its own AS number in the AS path. This is the default eBGP loop prevention and it works really well. This could cause problems though in certain scenarios such as multiple offices peering with a service provider using the same AS number. In this lab there's two topologies. There's one with interfaces only which you see here and then if I scroll down a little bit there's going to be another one with complete IP addressing. Take a look at it though. Two customers CE1 and CE2 in AS100. They peer with our pretend service provider in AS1000. Now, based on what I mentioned earlier about loop prevention, a prefix advertised by CE1 would go into the service provider network. The service provider sends it down to CE2, but CE2 doesn't accept it. Why? Because CE2's AS number is AS100, and it just received a prefix with that same number in the AS path. That's a problem that you're going to fix by using the BGP allow AS in feature. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, you're going to see the tasks for this lab. Task one is to configure IBGP peering between PE11 and PE12. That's gonna be in our service provider network. Task two is to configure eBGP peerings between PE11 and CE1. Task three is to configure eBGP peerings between PE12 and CE2. Task four is to make sure that you're using the directly connected links for each peering. Task five is on each CE router, advertise their loopback prefix into BGP. Task six is to use Nextop Self to fix any Nextop processing issues. Task seven is to use the BGP allow ASN feature so that CE1 accepts CE2's prefixes in its BGP table. CE2 must accept CE1's prefix in its BGP table. Task eight is that each CE router must be able to ping the other CE router's loopback IP when sourced from their own loopbacks. So we need IP reachability between the CE's loopbacks. So make sure you've downloaded the EvenG topology file, you have the initial configs loaded and ready to go, and let's get started. The first thing I'll do is configure the IBGP peerings between PE11 and PE12. From PE11, I'll say config T, router BGP 1000 neighbor 10.10.10.12, remote AS 1000. I know I'm gonna need next hop self here, so I'll hit up arrow, erase a little bit of config, next hop self. And since I'm here, I might as well configure one half of the peering towards CE1. Neighbor 10.10.111.1, remote AS 100. Now I'll go over to PE12 and do the same thing. Config T, router BGP 1000, neighbor 10.10.10.11, remote AS 1000. And you can see here there's a log message on PE12 saying that its BGP neighbor 10.10.10.11, which is PE11, is up. That's a great sign. Now I know I'm going to need next hop self here as well, so I'll hit up arrow, remove just a little bit of config, and say next hop self. And since I'm already here on PE12, I might as well configure one half of the peering towards CE2. Neighbor 10.10.212.2, remote AS 100. If I wanna verify the IBGP peering here, I can say do show IP BGP summary. I can see that on PE12, its neighbor 10.10.10.11 has been up for a minute and 10 seconds and we're receiving no prefixes. Now that other neighbor, 10.10.212.2, that's CE2. That peering is down because we didn't configure the other end. I'll go ahead and do that now. So let me hop over to CE2 and I'll go to config T, router BGP100, neighbor 10.10.212.12, remote AS1000. Great, and you can see the log message saying that CE2's neighbor, P12, is up. I can verify this by saying do show IP BGP summary. I can see that CE2's neighbor PE12 has been up for 21 seconds and we're receiving no prefixes. The last peering I need to configure is on CE1. So I'll go over to CE1 now, config T, router BGP100, neighbor 10.10.111.11, remote AS1000 have another excellent log message there saying that its neighbor PE11 is up. If I do show IP BGP summary, I can verify this. I can see that it's been up for nine seconds and we're receiving zero prefixes. 
At this point, tasks one through four and task number six are completed. The next thing I need to do is on each CE router, advertise their loopback prefix into BGP. This is step five. But before I do this, I wanna go on CE2 and I wanna debug IP BGP updates. And I'll go back to CE1 now and advertise the prefix. So I'm already in the BGP config. So the next thing I'll do is I'll say network 1.1.1.1 mask 255.255.255.255 and hit enter. Now go back to CE2 and take a look at these logs. Look at the debug message on the very bottom. It's saying that we received an update about the 1.1.1.1 slash 32 prefix, but it was denied due to the AS path contains our own AS. So CE1 advertised that prefix with the AS number of 100 in the path. It went through the service provider network back down here to CE2. CE2 received it, looked at the AS path information. It said, hold up, my AS is AS100 and I see a prefix that also has AS100 in the path. There must be a loop, I'm gonna deny this prefix. And because it was denied, it never makes it into CE2's BGP table. I can verify this by saying show IP BGP. There's nothing there. If I do show IP BGP summary, I'm receiving zero prefixes from PE12. So from here, I'll go to BGP and I'll advertise CE2's loopback prefix into BGP and see if CE1 received it. So from here, router BGP 100, network 2.2.2.2, mask 255.255.255.255 and hit enter. Let me go ahead and turn these debugs off. Do you all which stands for undebug all. Now I don't have any debugs on CE1, but if I look at its BGP table by saying do show IP BGP, the only network I have is my locally originated network for the loopback prefix. I'm not receiving CE2's loopback prefix for the same exact reason. How do we fix this? This is where the BGP allow ASN feature comes in. And to configure it, it's very simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that the neighbor PE11, if you send me a prefix with my own AS number inside, I'm gonna allow it in. Now, if I hit question mark here, now I do have the option to allow the prefix in based on how many times my AS number is included in the AS path. But I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter here. So what I'm saying is when the neighbor P11 sends me prefixes, if I see my own AS number in the AS path, I'm going to accept them. So if I say show IP BGP from here, I should have CE2's loopback prefix now. And you can see in the AS path, that AS100 is included. I'll go to CE2 and do the same thing. Neighbor 10.10.212.12, allow ASN. What I'm saying on CE2 is to allow its own AS number to be in the path when updates come in from PE12. If I do show IP BGP from here, I now have CE1's loopback prefix. And if I look at the AS path information, I can see that AS100 is there and it's being accepted, no problem. The final test here is to make sure that the CE routers have IP reachability between their loopbacks. So from here, I'll ping 1.1.1.1 source 2.2.2.2 and hit enter. Beautiful, successful pings. We have full reachability between the loopbacks on the CE routers when the pings are sourced from their own loopbacks. Okay, so we configured all of the BGP peerings. We advertised the loopbacks on the CE routers. We saw what happens when a prefix is received and the router sees its own AS number in the AS path. It gets denied. This is the default eBGP loop prevention behavior and we modified this by using the allow ASN feature. We configured the CE routers to accept prefix fixes even if their AS numbers are in the AS path. The key thing to remember about the allow ASN feature is that this is done on the CE side, not the provider side. And that takes care of the BGP allow ASN lab.